Hey, welcome to the Grab the Map podcast, where we don't just look at it, we grab the map. I'm your host, John Crutchfield, and today we're going to get right to it. You all know we like talking about wealth, building wealth through real estate, rental real estate in particular. Today, we've got Curtis May as our guest on the show. Hey, Curtis, are you there? I am here. What's going on? Man, I'm pretty excited to to get to talk to you. The first thing I did when I saw your name pull up was I looked at to YouTube. I see you got a growing subscriber base. You're investing in content to really educate people on uh, how to build wealth and how to bridge the gap. Is that what your shirt say? Yes. Bridge, bridge the, gap. the gap. Where do you and where you want to go? <laughs> All right. I think a lot Money. of that- our audience listening to this are going to be people that are interested in real estate investing. They might be flipping, wholesaling. They might be building wealth through rentals, right? And I'm excited for them to be able to just meet you. So let's start there and just have you introduce yourself and tell your story to folks who never met you. Mm-hmm. So my name is Curtis, and I am the host of the Practical Wealth Show podcast and the founder of Practical Wealth Solutions. And I've been doing this stuff for about, so I'm like the anti-Wall Street financial advisor. So the people that find me, their goal is work optional income. And I started, I got really licensed in the industry, a first insurance license and then investment license a couple of years after that. In my junior year in college, I'm going to date myself in 1985 when I realized the NBA was not looking for 5'11 shooting guards. So I got my... I was like, okay, I need a new dream. And then I want to read. (laughs) I need a new dream. And then I was doing that for about 10, 12 years. That I read a little purple book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And that's when I had my epiphany that there's two different games going on here. Okay. And so there's one where what I call the accumulation theory, right? Where you buy and hold, dollar cost average, get out of debt, buy term investor difference. And a lot of probably a lot of your listeners where they start, like they're starting in that and they're realizing, all right, I want to, I need to get this done faster. I don't think the stock market is going to take me where I want to go. And then I started to see, okay, there's another game going on where I call it the velocity method. So velocity of money is an economic principle, like the bird. That's just moving money in out of assets where you're taught to put money in, get it back out, right? Create cash flow, use leverage. And it's just more movement of money. So I started to, I didn't understand it all, but Rich Dad, Poor Dad let me know that there was another game going on. And ever since then, I've been trying to change how my family dealt with money. So I'm married of three three daughters. One just graduated, one in college and one going into eighth grade. So I worked very hard. And so that's what I do. I just, I'm really, my philosophy is that if you're trying to not me, you don't want to hear my whole life story, but is that we're, your economic situation is a matter of choice and not chance. And so what you know today, that's why I consider myself a financial educator, will determine where you'll be at three, five, 10 years from now. So I try to put, I want, hopefully your list is, I'll give you a new framework, a new, a change viewpoint can change your life. So I want you to look at money differently. And so that's my story. I, I just, I teach people how money works. I'm a bit of a contrarian. So everything you think you know, you may hear the hop opposite from me here today, but that's all right. That just means you're starting to think because I don't want to tell you what to think. That's good. That's good. I think a lot of people, when they start thinking about managing their money or getting control of their financial situation, uh, maybe they start thinking about how to make additional income or how to keep some of the income that they're making. They often start in those mass media places, right? So I might Google passive income or how to build my wealth and some of the great internet marketers pop up, right? And I know you know Dave Ramsey. So Dave Dave Ramsey often pops up um, and hearing that you're a contrarian, I'm guessing that you and him would disagree if you were always sitting down at the table, right? Yes. It's not probably about 75% of what he says is good, okay? But if you're trying to be because this thing is all based on the accumulation theory get out of debt including your house paying off your house is is a complete waste of money okay in in today's economic climate so make an extra mortgage payment see most of us are trained by the financial institutions or people that work for the financial institutions so 
what you got to do is so we, yes we would the short answer is yes we would be opposite on most stuff because a lot of this stuff he says is great but there's a few things that are so wrong it messes up your whole plan and so if your goal if you're listening to if they're listening to your show i would assume their goal is to become financially independent financially free is that would you say that's their objective you're muted you're muted I'm talking muted. <laughs> like, right. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. They're so now to become financially free. So how does maxing out your 401k help you do that? How does putting money in a Roth help you do that? I'm not saying not do it, but the goal of those accounts is, as, is assets under management for Wall Street. Their goal is not make you rich. It's, you know, because nothing, that stuff doesn't generate cash flow. You're not even buying dividend paying stocks. You're just buying for hoping for capital appreciation of the shares that you're buying every month. And then you're locking your money up for 20 years. If you're an investor, I would argue, I just tell a client of mine is more, I said, listen, you, in her case, it might be good for her to stop her contributions 401k for right now because she has no money in savings, right? So I'm like, if you don't have any money in savings, safe, liquid, accessible guarantee, because she thought the 401k was savings. It's not. You can't even access it and it's in the stock market. So it's investing. You have no money, you have debt. So if you don't have access to money, first time you come up with, you have an emergency or you have something where you have to come up with some money, her, I said, what is your only option? I have to pull money out the 401k or I got to use other people's money. So now she's going into a bigger hole, right? And so you have to have savings. I said, listen, I took her, I told her, here's your monthly income. Your first goal is three to six months of this. And I don't even want to talk about investing, okay? Now, you can invest in things that make money, which I call cash machines, but you need to build a base. See, most people are trying to build an empire on a, a house of sand. Like, I have no foundation, and then they feel so broken behind. They're just trying to hit home runs. Oh, I, I want to do this flip. I want to do, I want to do wholesale deals. I want to, they're trying to get these big, I need thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000, and you do need that. But that's not where you start. I think we all start from that basic education that we get sometimes from home, right? And then sometimes from the masses. So if I think about my old story, like just starting it off with a good job is a good foundation for some people. And then if you got a good job, they offer a 401k, right? Maybe even some matching. I think a lot of times we stop when... We think, okay, I've got a good job and I'm putting money into my 401k, but we don't think about what happens with that money once it's in the 401. What are they doing with the money? What could it be doing for me? Are there other options? I think a lot of times we stop with that. So is that where you start teaching people? Is yeah, that where you I, start inviting? I, start, okay. I actually start a step before that. So what I'm known for really is I try to, I'm known for helping families and business owners, investors manage their money so they can feel safe and free at the same time. Okay. And, but it starts with the problem is starting at the beginning. So if you ever read the richest man in Babylon, the first lesson in that is part of all you earn is yours to keep. Right. So that means paying yourself first. So it starts with cash flow control is the name of the game. So most people don't if they but most people don't even budget but budgeting i don't like budgeting is like driving a car looking through the rearview mirror okay it's like dieting it's constrictive it's scarcely focused so one of the things that you want to start with is you know what's coming in what's going out and you have to learn to tell your money where to go when it hits your account instead of asking where it went and then 10 15 20 percent of that money needs to go into savings or what we call a wealth coordination account so that you have money to invest so it starts there see because what happens is we think we're saving we take money and put it in the, in the in the qualified plan and i think up to the match is fine but if you don't have enough i have people that have three hundred thousand in their 401k and don't have five thousand dollars in the bank and they said they want to be real estate yeah. investors so that's completely out of balance if you look at the balance sheet because you got it. Most of your, if you poll your investors, people that have been doing it for a minute, 
all of my clients, because I'll probably 60% of my clients are real big ones, anywhere from five properties to a hundred door. Okay. That's who I work with. And mm -hmm. if you ask them, do you think you can make, is your portfolio, you think outperforming the S and P? And they go, hell yeah. Okay. Where should your money be going? Where, where do you, uh, so that means you should be putting money where you have access to capital. This is what we teach with our banking strategy that I teach, but you want access to capital so you can leverage a pool of money that you control to buy or build assets that generate cash flow. If your goal is to become financially free. So if you need six grand a month, passive income, it ain't really passive, but just say passive income from me, not from earned income. Then, so if you got, say you net $500 a door, what's your plan? You need 11, 12 doors. So what's your time for you want to do it in three years, five years, 10, one house a year for the next 10 years, whatever that is. Now that's your plan. I would argue that's a better plan than trying to get 10, 10, two, a million, two, two million dollars in a 401k. Because one, you got leverage. So if you want $100,000 of stock, how much money do you need? $100,000. $100,000. If you want $100,000 of the real estate, how much money do you need? Yeah, you might be able to get in it for 10 or 20. So now, yeah, let's say even 20. Then you could get, if you had 100 grand, you could get four properties and get the bank to loan you money for the rest of it. Now you've got leverage, you've got appreciation, possibly, you've got debt pay down from the tenant, and you have positive cash flow, and you have a tax benefit. You don't get any of that with a 401k. But here's the difference. You have, investing is not about buying something, it's really about becoming. So if you're going to do this, you've got to want to learn to become a real investor, right? A, a person that takes control that wants control of their money, their personal economy, we call it. And so if you're not willing to do that, then keep reading Dave, taking baby steps and funding the 401k. And don't call me because I can't help you. I mean, one of the things that interests me from this conversation is you're not following the crowd of thought, right? But you mentioned is broke. work with people that have <laughs> <laughs> the crowd is broke. Huh? That's why there's 99 percenters and one percenters. Right. Or 98 percenters and two percenters. So if you're following the first of all, if you are like a high income professional, you have uncommon income. You can't take common advice, first of all. Right. And then if you're following what everybody else is doing, most people, the average six year old, this is according to like Fidelity, has less than $200,000 in their 401k. So if you're doing that, you're on a path, like you're going off a cliff and you're just in a sheep, herd of sheep, and they're all running off the cliff and you're just in the herd and you're about to go off a cliff because you don't take time to look at where am I at? I'm going in the wrong direction. So now you got, I'm sorry. So finish the question. So I'll get, I'm going to, no, well, I guess I'm going to, I'm going to take this opportunity to ask questions for some of the people in the group who they've already figured out wealth is built in investing in assets. They've already figured out that leverage is a key way to advance yourself. I use the birth strategy personally. So I know a lot of guys that are, have figured out, okay, velocity of money. If I can take this money and keep it moving and keep it growing, that it's going to be more beneficial. But I think one of the things that I'd ask is, okay, if somebody has a hundred properties or 50 properties, haven't they figured it all out or do they still need financial education? Yeah, no, they figured out how to make money, right? So it's three skills mm -hmm. of money, make it, keep it, grow it. So when I see these guys, they have what I call uncoordinated financial decisions. So I'll look at their situation. We do something called a personal financial snapshot. So we'll do like a one-page financial plan so you can see all your money. So what we're looking at is, so I take them through the five principles of personal finance. So one I know people that they, I was listening to a training call of one of my people, they do the Burr method. So they don't save, they just get their money out and put it into another deal. So they might have 30 grand in an emergency fund. If you've got rental properties, COVID has proved you need more liquidity than that, okay? And so precedent has been set. So I try to get people saving 15, 20% of their gross revenue. Second one, this is where I help a lot of big, bigger, smaller investors is the second principle is maximum protection, okay? See, so if you watch the Game of Thrones, think of your personal economy 
right? And you're a cast your castle, right? So you have to have a moat around the castle, okay? So that means you have to have protection, right? So protection, so you have to protect your stuff. So a lot of people are underinsured. They have, nobody looks at their, for example, their car and homeowners. They don't have the maximum liability coverage they can have, okay? A lot of people in their house don't have replacement costs on their homeowners, don't, on their personal homeowners. And you have to look at the, the homeowner's insurance on your property to know what that covers. Are you looking at that? Or are you just, oh, I got covered. But do you have the right coverage? Uh, I had a woman who had about $2 million worth of real estate. She had five LLCs. So I'm going through this analysis with her. She had about hundred grand a year of passive income. And so I'm looking at that. So like protection was where it's missing. I said, are oh, you got these LLCs? I said, do you have any liability coverage? Her umbrella coverage. She goes, no, what's that? I was like, dude, you need at least a million dollars, right? So that means if somebody falls on one of your properties and sues you, you have the insurance company's lawyers to protect you. So most of y'all need a million, two million dollars worth of homeowners. It costs like four or five hundred dollars a year. It's nothing. But you gotta know that that tell your car guy to ask for it, that you want it. You probably get a bundle discount. So that's what I mean by playing defense. So a lot of people, they're uncoordinated. They, they, I find they don't have that. Then they don't. What happens if you get, if you still have a job, if you get hurt and can't work? Do you have disability insurance? So this is, I'm the defensive coordinator, right? So they're good at offense, but they're not good at defense, right? Uh, most of them are underinsured when it comes to life insurance. So if you're like 42 and you make 100 grand a year, you can have your income, whatever it is, you can have whatever you make a year, earned income times 25, right? So if you don't have that much life insurance, you're underinsured. Do you have a will? Do you have a trust? Do you have entities? All that's defense. So most people, even if they're successful, like the ones that make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, when I take them through this process, I still see gaps in their courage. I teach infinite banking, right? So even when you do that, which is where you should store your cash. So what people do is they get a flip, they put it right into another deal. What's the rate of return on equity? Zero. So you basically have money sitting underneath a mattress. My clients will stop that. And I'm not going to go into that today unless you want to. A properly structured permanent insurance, whole life insurance. They'll dump that in there. Now you can take, you can collateralize it, do the other property, but now you have the other asset, but your money is still making money because you didn't take it out and put it into another deal. Now you've got the dollar doing multiple jobs. So I focus on getting people more efficient. So if you want to create maximum wealth, you've got to create maximum efficiency. So it's, and I'm on a, I'm on a rant, so you can stop me, but I'm, <laughs> I, I try to teach people what I call the financial physics. They don't know they're good at your thing, but they don't know. So a lot of times they don't teach like in personal finances, you're coming out of an investor from personal finance into investing. The protection thing is completely overlooked, okay? The understanding things like opportunity costs, okay? And wealth transfers. So opportunity costs is what money. So let's say you, you end up owing a tax bill of $15,000, $20,000, and you have the savings, so you just pay it, okay? Okay, but that $20,000 is gone now, right? You don't have it no more, but it's worse than that, right? Because what people don't do is if you spent, paid a tax or you spent something you didn't have to spend, not only did you lose the money, you lost the potential future value of what that money had become had you saved or invested it. And that's called opportunity cost. So for most families, that is like one to $3 million of money they're just giving away over their working lifetime, how they finance cars, right? The, how they taxes, how they pay mortgage payments how they fund their qualified plans, how they pay for education. We call these wealth transfers. And what I do is there, I teach people there's more opportunity in minimizing the losses in your life, becoming more efficient, eliminating wealth transfers. Think of it as a bucket, right? You're trying to fill up your money bucket, but you got holes in the bottom, debt, taxes, opportunity costs, right? Fees you don't have to pay, tax you don't have to pay. And so while you're still chasing returns, I help people plug the holes. See, if, because what happens is always trying to outrun the money that they're giving away. But if you plug the holes, even if you didn't have to swing for the fences, you're still growing your bucket of money. And so I'm like the, let's get your cash flow under control. Let's 
get you a coordinated plan so that all your money's working for you all the time. And I want to minimize risk. Risk means probability of loss. It doesn't mean opportunity for gain <laughs> and, and current and future taxation. I think the best way to reduce your risk is that as your knowledge goes up, your risk goes down, right? Because investing is not about buying something. It's really about becoming. So in our practice, once we get their finances straight, which are save, protect, legacy, for replacement of assets at death, guaranteed, that's another part that's missing, liquidity, six or 12 months, and velocity. But see there, so in that process, investing is number five. So if I'm talking to your people, they're already doing number five, velocity. Right. But I people would skip go, to People skip yeah. to number five. They skip to five because that's <laughs> exciting. See, my stuff is not sexy, but that's the one that keeps you in the game, right? So we just go back and they have some of the things going on through one through five. I just backfill and make sure it's solid. So because you have to have financial planning is not about investing. It's really more about provisioning, okay, against stuff going sideways, right? So you should have contingencies built in so that you can pivot and your plan should work no matter what. Whether markets are up, markets go up, markets go down, markets go sideways, you're supposed to win either way. And most people don't have a plan that works. If you're just investing, hoping houses go up, you're really speculating. That's not even investing. And you're investing for capital gains yep. and buying low, selling high. You don't know what the market's going to do. So that's speculating because you can't. Most time it's, it's going to go up, but real estate hasn't always gone up. We've, I've experienced that. I'm older than you. And, but so you just got to, what happens if I can't, a lot of people are stuck with stuff and they can't sell it. Did you buy it at a price where there's cash flow if you rent it out? Yep. And that kind of stuff. I try to, to like to last, I do a call for our clients and we had uh, Zach Beach on who I've had on my show, a uh, smart real estate coach, but I, I have a membership called the Money for Life Club. And I was like, look, because I'm always teaching people, look, you got to make more money. Okay. So I'm always, you got to work on production. So I had him talking on, talk about lease options, how to buy without cash or credit, teach our clients new way to get money coming in the door. And what, by becoming, he calls it a deal architect, you just mute yourself how to do more deals in a high interest rate environment, his people are killing it. His students are killing it. Yeah. I, I think that a lot of people do skip to them fast. Yes. And um, myself included, I think you get fascinated with the deal and the game. And it is good to sometimes well, slow I, down I a little bit. Science. We can talk about this later. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I actually think somebody might have been piqued by this conversation. You've hit a bunch of different topics, a bunch of different things that we need to be thinking about. How do you work with people? What does that look like when you're, when people are engaging with you? What is this program? Is there a course? Is there, uh, yeah. So I have, I, do, I have a lot of what I call community, what is my goal to call it? Community service content. So my YouTube channel and our podcast, a lot of stuff where you can find out our theme is wealth outside of Wall Street. I teach stuff on what I call the financial physics, the collateralization strategy we teach that you might heard is privatized banking or infinite banking, that's basically a strategy for where you store your liquidity so you can take over your function. But work with me, what I focus on with a client, if you were to call me, step one, it's like really four steps. Where are you now? So what's your present, like, where do you want to go? And then where are you now? And is what you're doing taking you where you want to go? Which is what? Passive income equal to or greater than your expenses. So then you got to look at, all right, where am I deploying my capital in a way that optimizes that? That's step one. Because once you figure out what you're doing, you'll know what you should be investing in. It's not my job to tell you what to invest in is your money. I'll help guide you, right. but ultimately you are your best investor. The second thing is I, I want you to understand what they like and don't like about what you're doing. Okay. And really focus on what you like. I want to make sure you're saving, your savings flow. What I want to make sure you're saving, but does it flow well? And are you growing? And then are you creating a lifestyle ceiling? So what happens is money, if I'm, I'm doing it, if y'all listen to this, most people income goes up through pay raises in their business. But what they do is their lifestyle goes up and locks them with their new money. 100%. Right? 100%. So, so guess why? You make a million, you spend a million, you're still broke, right? You just, you're working for the bank. You're working for stuff. So you have to learn how to separate cash flow from lifestyle because the gap between 
your what you're making and what you're spending is where wealth is created. So I all conversations for me start with cash flow. And then I want to make sure you're protected no matter what happens while you're growing your money. And then we just put a foundation so that every year you get better off no matter what. So we working with us is like, all right, where are you at now? Let's find money that you're losing unknowingly and unnecessary. That's the first step is helping people get more efficient. So my goal is to help people improve current cash flow to live the best life you can today. I don't believe in a deferred life. <laughs> I, I'm not telling you, you can't go on vacation. You can't go to Starbucks. Curtis wants you to go on two or three vacations a year. We're going to figure out how to get you to do that. I want you to increase your take-home pay. That's what we're talking about. And then just make sure that you're, do you have a good cash flow structure? Have you separated your business, your real estate from your personal? How much are you paying yourself out of your real estate, out of your business? Because a lot of people don't separate. They just got it all going into one pot. And so we separate so you can have clarity on how is this asset working for me? Where am I at in terms of my goal for financial freedom? And then because when I meet people, think about this. The most people, when they meet us, they have these problems. They're not fully protected. They're not sure. So there are gaps in their coverage. They don't have a plan for what happens to their money after they're gone. No estate or legacy plan. Their money isn't flowing well. So they still feel, even though they got, I've got people that are making like 80 grand a month and they're still paycheck to paycheck because they yeah. spend all of it. Okay. Everything. Every, and they're everything overlap, comes right? Yeah. And so they have inefficient cash flow structures. That's really the first place we start. And then they've heard they can be their own banker with life insurance, but they don't know who they can trust. They they hear different sound bites on IG or TikTok and half of those are BS, right? Because there are people that just are selling a product, but they don't really understand how to really do it. And so there are charlatans out there with that. So half time people find me, I'm cleaning up dumb stuff they did from somebody didn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> hey. And so that's, so I tell people, if you're dealing with any of that stuff, that's the people that we help. It just gives you clarity on what you want and what you're doing. And they just make sure that you're, you're going where you want. And at the core, I'm a financial educator. So I don't just tell people what to do. I, I was talking to a young lady this morning. I said, okay, tell me, I showed her, I said, tell me what I said. So I made her repeat it back to me. And how do you think this helps you? Because I had her go through her, what are you trying to, comp what are you, I showed her a map of her finances. What do you think you need to do? I think I got to get my investments up. Now, Jane had $5,000 in savings, right? $22,000 of the debt. And I said, what's the order? I says, you want to put more money here? How does this help you? If you don't have any money in savings and something comes up, what do you have to do? Go into more debt. Okay, so what's the focus needs to be then? I guess I got to save more money. So we got to. Start with that. So it's what you do is dictated by what you want and what you're doing now. So it's really fluid. Everybody, if I were to talk to everybody, y'all called me, which would be great, but everybody on here would be a different person because everybody's got a unique situation. The strategies are the same, but everybody's got a different starting point, right? And so what we do is we just, with our team, we just adapt it to their situation then we do quarterly check-ins with our people. We have a program called Money Organization Plan, and then we check in quarterly because you can't just do it. It's not a set it and forget it thing. A plane, when it takes off, is off course most of the time, right? And so you got to make car constant adjustments, and that's what we do. We do weekly study group calls. We do events. We do the shows. I have guest speakers because I. it's important to me that our people are empowered to think about money. It's not a set it and like listen to your show, reading books, going to courses. That's how you become, right? You've got to work on your number one asset, which is you, right? What do you, how do you do that? Your mindset, what do you watch? What do you listen to? What do you read? Who you hang around? Your skill set, what do you know how to do? Like you yeah. said, I need to make more money. That's the wrong question. The question is, I need more. If you don't make enough money from your W-2 or even as, a, as an investor, that's because you reached what I call a ceiling complexity with what you know how to do. So you need to invest in raising your ceiling, your knowledge. And as your knowledge goes up, your ability to earn money increases because money is a result 
of solving problems, of creating value in the marketplace. And then the third thing, I'm going to stop talking, is networking and your network. You know, who do you know? But really, more importantly, who knows you, right? Who knows you're an investor? Who knows, here's the skill set, raising private money. So eventually you're going to run out of the money the bank's going to give you. So what if you can learn, I had a guy on my show, Jay Connor, on raising private money. And uh, one of my clients, he said, listen, he took, he spent like $2,500 on a raised capital course. But now it's within two weeks, he can access like, I don't know, what do you tell me? Like eight, $10 million from about 10, 12 dentists that he knows that are willing to loan him money from their self-directed IRA to do a deal he gives. And so that, but you got, he had to learn how to do that. That's what expanded his income because he invested in knowledge to be able to expand his deal box, so to speak. And so you all like on a quarterly basis, you should be getting better at stuff on purpose. How can I get better? How can I, I'm an old basketball player. So how can I work on my game? Can I go left and finish strong to the basket? Can I cross over and pull up with the J and I'll, I might do that three, shoot 300 times a day to get good at that one move. That's what I used to do when I was in high school and college. And so you should be doing that in business. Yeah, this is great. I definitely am learning a lot from your mindset, taking some notes here about some things I need to be thinking about deeper as well. How do people get in touch with you if they are interested in taking advantage of your teaching, your knowledge, your skill set? How do people reach you? So you can go to my uh, website, uh, schoolwealth.net. And then on there, a, a pop-up will pop up. Uh, you'll see a button for Be The Bank. There's a bunch of different ways to just reach out and make an appointment if you want to get ready to talk. If not, I'll suggest mm -hmm. just follow along with what I'm doing. You can follow me on IG or link YouTube, the best place to subscribe. And I'm always either doing interviews or just creating content to teach a concept I've thought about. I'm working on a thing. Here's a thing I, I just created that I think would be good. We're going to give you a special link for your listeners, they'll have that, those links on it. But if you're, yeah. I'm trying to find my links, but I have two gifts, right? Because I thought yeah, they can pick either one or both. So the number they're going to text to, one is going to be, I have a report on, which one is which? Which one is which? Okay. So one, I have a report. I was watching Arnold, the, the Arnold, the documentary. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't know when he got out of bodybuilding before he made his first movie, start out he wanted to be a star he wanted to be like Clint Eastwood he didn't want to do little extra parts and he could do that because he was already a multi-millionaire real estate investor he had over a hundred he had like a couple of hundred unit apartment buildings that he started with single families and just traded up in the 70s with his bodybuilding earnings so one of them is how to build how to be like Arnold that's the that's the report right and so if you'll text millionaire all caps to the number 833-442-0250. I'll send you that report, How to Become a Millionaire Like Arnold. And then for those of y'all may have heard about something called infinite banking, I have a free report, infinite banking in real estate, where we talk about the strategy and how it helps enhance your real estate investing. And you can text it to the same number, 833-442-0250, but just put infinite, I-N-F-I-N-I-T-E, R-E, right? Real estate, infinite real estate. But just do put R-E in tech, put that in the uh, message. And then we'll send you out both reports. That'll put you on an email list. And then even from there, you'll get emails from us if you like a complimentary consultation. But I'm big on education. So I would follow me and then check out our website. And then we'll also send you a, a free gift. And we'll, we can put all this stuff in the show notes for you. So how's that, sir? <laughs> yeah, that would be great. I think that's super valuable and I appreciate it. Curtis May, y'all, Curtis May, get into the sub uh, at Grab the Map podcast. Curtis, this has been very helpful. Let's say that I'm somebody who just plugged into this. I didn't really know I was going to meet Curtis May today. What's a takeaway you think that somebody could take if it was like a sound bite towards the end here that would actually change? Yeah, so I would say that I like to, I, one of the biggest areas where people lose money at is they don't control their cash flow, right? And so I would look at, I would 
that what's coming in, what's going out, what's coming in with my real estate and what's my net profit and what am I doing with that? And then I would do it with my household. And so I would get some tool, email me, I'll send you a cash flow map tool so you can see it. And the numbers tell financial literacy, guys, is accounting. And so the numbers tell a story. And so you need to know your story. That's what a game is won and lost. That when money hits your account, what do you do with it? So if you didn't hear, if you didn't do anything else, because y'all have already mastered making money, not mastered, but you're already making money, you're already in, in velocity. But now it's the, the key thing is I want you to leave you with this is not what you earn, it's what you keep and how hard it works for you. So I would work on keeping more of it. And if you need help with keeping more of it, reach out. We will, even if you get a follow from us, I have another little report called, I can't remember what the thing is. It's called Budging Stinks. And then we will help you create a cash flow map and then look at, okay, where's my money coming from? Where is it going? And then everything else solves from that. You can't spend less than you make. And no other plan. They, we don't need to talk about nothing else. You can't do anything else because you, just, you don't, you don't have control of your money. So that's where I like to start people. And then read 10 to 15 pages a day. Yeah. Of something. So of, of, well, oh, man. of email me and I'll t give you the something. <laughs> not there, you go. there you go. Not me. Not no. Right. Not <laughs> anything, but you know, rich dad, poor dad. So I tell people, look, two books a month, really. One on your thing, real estate, money, right? And then what do you, but what do you need to get good at a real estate negotiation? So that's never split the difference. That kind of stuff. What can you, sales, marketing, because you're really into marketing business because you got to attract buyers. You got to, it's all financing. You really, real estate's a financing game. So you need to understand economics so that you can see the economics in one lesson, for example. So you can see certain people that are trying to get your vote. They have bad policies. So your people, are not really listening to what they're proposing and they're, they're going to vote for this person or that person, whether they like them or not. And what you need to do is under, be bigger than that. You can make money either way, but you don't need people that are putting up road barriers to you making money. So you need to look at that kind of stuff as people of color. Let's just say you need to pay attention to what are the, what's going on out there so that you, if, again, if you know what's going on, you know what to do. So be well-read. Be, don't take sound bites for stuff. Understand the numbers. If you understand half the stuff that people talk about policy wise, it's complete nonsense and it can't work. If you understand economics, if you understand basic stuff. And so you got to be able to read through that stuff. I watch these political commercials. This is a joke. Okay. You can't do that. How are you going to lower prices? Everything you do increases prices, right? Because you're causing inflation. Inflation is making the, it's not that the price are going up is that the value of the dollar is going down. Why is that? What is it causing that to happen? How do you protect yourself from that? That's what I mean by the financial physics. So that's, if you follow me, those are the type of things I try to get people to understand. And then we help people implement a financial plan that will, a financial planning process that helps you insulate yourself from that and take advantage of opportunities that present themselves to you. Yep, so main takeaway at the end here is know where your money's going. Let's start with cash flow, right? Make sure that you know how much is coming in, how much is going out, and make sure that they are there. That's the game right there. Start so we'll there. Start there. Cash flow. Right. Good deal. Curtis May, folks. And John, Bill Beer, thank you for taking the time to this podcast. As you all know, I answer every single email that you send to grab the map at gmail.com. So if you want to reach me, you can reach me there. Always all over social media at grab the map. Curtis, thanks again, man. I know you didn't have to take your time out to do this. And hopefully somebody will take massive action and reach out to you. Hopefully somebody will take the opportunity, meet you new, uh, add you to their network as I have here. Don't just look at it, folks. Grab the map. Thanks, so